So I would like to take a look at all of the different ways we can stretch, flip, and shift the square root function. So we will start with our basic square root function. If you don't remember, like the basic graph looks like this. And let's look at some different ways we can move it around. So the first thing I have is y equals, so we're going to sketch all of these, y equals the opposite of f of x. So the first thing you might want to do is change this notation, which can be a little intimidating, and replace that f of x with the square root of x. So now I need negative square root of x. So just a little thinking here should help us out. We know that x, we can only take the square root of non-negative numbers, so I need my x's to be 0 or bigger. That puts me over here to the right side of the y-axis. And we know that right, this part that I just circled is always positive. So if that part's always positive and I have a negative sign in front of it, my y values are always negative. So I need a place where my x's are positive, my y's are negative. That makes it quadrant 4. So that square root function gets reflected, gets flipped down here to quadrant 4. So the other way you think about this, it's a negative sign outside the square root function. That's a flip over the x-axis, okay. or a flip in the vertical direction. All right, so let's take a look at the other way that might come up. What if I have y equals f of negative x? So now, right, the x inside the function gets replaced with a negative x. So I have the square root of negative x. So now, what x's can we actually plug into our function so that, right, I'm taking the square root of positive things. So if I have this negative sign here, I need another negative to come in with those x values so that the two negatives will make it positive. So I need my x's to be negative, this one will make them positive. My y values, right, what comes out of the little dotted line there, those y values are positive. That puts me in quadrant 2. So a negative sign inside my function, right, takes my basic square root one up here and flips it over the y-axis. A flip in the horizontal direction over the y-axis. All right, f of the quantity x plus 4. Square root, so this whole business, x plus 4, replaces the x in our square root function. The square root of x plus 4. Pluses and minuses, right, with the x or shifts up, down, left, right. Inside the function is left or right. Plus is left, so we're going to move left 4. Okay. And if somebody asked you about the domain, the range, you would either have your graph, and say, hey, that goes all the way over to negative 4 and then continues on to infinity. My range, I'm still only going from 0 to infinity, which makes sense if you think about the domain of the original. Right? It gets shifted left 4. Here's left 4 from 0. Range didn't change because we didn't move up or down. Okay. Let's take a look at y equals f of the quantity 4x. Okay. So now I have the square root of 4x. A coefficient inside right, corresponds to a horizontal stretch or shrink. The number that's bigger than 1 corresponds to a shrink. Okay. Now, for most of our algebraic functions, it's not going to matter if we think of it horizontally or vertically because we can usually pull that coefficient out in front and make it vertical. Now when you get to trig, that's not as easy. You have to deal with the horizontal um, shrinks and stretches. But I really prefer, as long as I can get away with it, to split that apart, which I can do because they're multiplying. Simplify the square root of 4. Tag along that square root of 2. 
And now I'm graphing a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. So I would take that basic function and stretch it by a factor of 2. Stretches are really hard to see unless you have um, the original function to look at to compare to. Okay, let's see. What about this one here? y equals f of x minus 4. So that would be my basic function. The minus 4 happens afterwards. So that's a down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Domain and range. Maybe an intercept. You should be thinking about that. And my last one, y equals 2 times f of x, right? 2 times the square root of x. Well, we did that already, didn't we? So that's just our vertical stretch of a factor of 2.